Hi, my name is Brian Koenig. I am the president of Soccer 2000. We are a soccer specialty store located in Downers Grove. We specialize in servicing club uniforms and a personalized retail experience. Our staff at Soccer 2000 live, eat, and breathe soccer. When you come into Soccer 2000, you're gonna be talking to somebody who knows the sport. So if you have questions about footwear, you're gonna get answers. If you have questions about the replica jerseys, you're gonna get answers because that is our expertise. Soccer 2000 has an exclusive team center that includes a wide variety of uniform kits from the top manufacturers to help your club choose the next kit that will make you guys look great on the field. Soccer 2000 provides exceptional individual and club service. Contact us at 630-241-9500 or find us online at soccer2000.com. So we set the foundation for every player to come into the system. So now we got to get them into the system and then make them play that foundation. I think over the past three games, I think we've been playing better soccer. Now we just got to put the ball in the net. As the captain, you talk about there's lots of new faces. You've got the roster kind of changing all the time. What, is, what does that ask of you as a leader on this team in terms of helping integrate those new guys into the squad? Uh, most importantly, actions speak louder than words at the end of the day. So when people look back on two years ago when we first started to now, they should be able to see the same integrity, the same intensity, and the same foundation. And if I can keep that standard and I'm the captain, then everybody should follow. In general, how would you describe of the mood of the team right now? One win, one loss, one draw, perfectly even 500 on the season so far. How would you describe where you guys are at, what the vibe has been this week in the locker room and at training? Uh, I think we're more happy than not happy, mainly because the soccer's good. Uh, if our only problem right now is putting the ball in the back of the net and it's not about possession or defending, then that's a good problem to have. So now it's just executing. So I think it's a good thing. Well, hopefully you guys are able to execute well tonight. A.R. Smith, thanks for taking a few moments. We'll have Chicago House versus Chani Oslo coming up next here from DePaul College Prep. We're building. We're building. We're building. We're building. An academic wing. An athletic complex. A library. A modern campus. Family. Tradition. School spirit. Respect. We're building. We're, We're building. building. We're building. Success. Champions. Legacy. Leaders. Excellence. Health. Inclusion. A Vincentian mission. Community. We're building. We're building. Estamos construyendo. We're building DePaul College Prep. Since our founding in 2014, we have been building something incredible at DePaul College Prep. We've built a name, a campus, and a welcoming community. We've built upon the service-focused charism of the Vincentians. We've built on the foundation of a diverse, exciting, and beautiful city. We've built the curriculum and programs to provide a rigorous Vincentian Catholic College Prep education. We've built a community who live out our mission and vision. At DePaul College Prep, we truly are building in so many ways and have been since laying the foundation in 2014. We are so proud to see our students, faculty, and alumni immersed in our mission of teaching, learning, faith, and service. And we're grateful for the young women and men who have been a special part of our school community over the past nine years and who strive to have a positive impact in our neighborhoods, our city, and our world. The energy around our community of faith and learning is palpable. Our enrollment has risen every year since our founding in 2014. We will soon welcome more than 1,100 students who come to us from nearly 60 different zip codes from around the city. Lots of us come from different backgrounds and religious affiliations, but at the same time, we don't really take that into account because we all come together and we support each other in what we believe in. And so I feel like that support system is very important in building an inclusive community.
it just feels like a big family. Like everyone goes back to the community because of how welcoming it is and how like easy it is to make friends here. My favorite part of being a student here at DePaul College Prep is just the family and the community that we have built here. They're always encouraging students to be heard and to put their voice out there, whether it's a new club being made or some type of after school activity. At the core of DePaul College Prep's growth is the people who work hard to make our vision a reality. Our leadership and faculty have designed a rigorous curriculum paired with meaningful co-curricular programming. Our academic partnership with DePaul University, dedicated faculty, innovative curriculum, and welcoming community creates an environment that encourages intellectual curiosity and values each student. We have teachers and coaches who align with our mission and help support our students' success in academics, athletics, activities, and personal and spiritual development. We provide modern spaces and technology needed to serve our community. And as we speak, the addition of our much needed South Academic Wing is underway and will open in the fall of 2023. This extension will include 19 classrooms, two science labs, and a dining space. Our most important work is helping to form young women and men who are ready for college, university, and life. We are already seeing the fruits of our labor as our graduates matriculate at a rich array of nationally ranked colleges and universities across the country and are beginning their careers in a multitude of industries. The success of DePaul Prep students and alumni has helped ignite the school's growth and has established the school as a community anchor. As someone who's been a part of the DePaul College Prep family since day one, I am humbled by the interest and support of our students and families from our surrounding neighborhoods and across the city. And it's not just that we've seen the enrollment numbers go up, which is critical, but it's about each and every student we serve. DePaul Prep is a special community. These are talented, caring, smart, young women and men who want to contribute to what we are building here. As we evaluated schools, we were really impressed with the foundation that's been built here at DePaul, but now that we're a part of this, we feel like we're a part of something that's building, and I've moved from being impressed to really being proud. At DePaul Prep, I remember my first day walking in, I'm like, okay, I got some big shoes to fill, and ever since that day, it's made me into who I am. When I started at DePaul Prep, I was definitely not the best student. Never imagined that I was even going to get into college, let alone like have all these options, I've right now 12 options of college. When our oldest Cole was in the college process, who is now a freshman at Notre Dame, he was able to have many selections of colleges and we credit to Paul Prep for setting him up, as well as our son John, with college options. And that is what we're most proud of for our boys. All the construction that's been put into the school, I'm excited to see where it will lead us for my little sister and future students. Everything's changing in a new school, but I think it's something special and I think it's something that not every kid gets to experience. The last nine years have brought to Paul College Prep its new campus in Roscoe Village, a multi-sport stadium, the David J. and Carrie R. Carlson Library, a fitness center, multiple labs, and other facilities that have helped create a future-ready environment for our students and teachers. As the school's 10th anniversary nears, continued growth is on the horizon. We're building DePaul College Prep. We ask ourselves St. Vincent DePaul's central question, what must be done? And then we answer that question by building. By building DePaul Prep, to be a leader in academics, in faith life, in the social and emotional wellness of our students, and by building our physical campus to be a community anchor for the city of Chicago and its families. With the academic facilities now safely secured, we turn our attention to building our endowment for scholarships and building our indoor athletic complex to complement our modern outdoor stadium. The indoor athletic complex is an essential element for the vibrancy and education of the DePaul Prep community. It's more than a home for our student athletes and teams. It's spaces for our health and wellness and gym classes, and a place for the DePaul Prep community to come together for pep rallies, assemblies, dances, all school masses, and important school ceremonies. 
will you help make tonight our most successful step forward in our plans to build DePaul College Prep? Build with us, not only to mark our first 10 years, build with us so that 20, 30, 50 years from now and beyond, we can all be proud of what we've accomplished for the families of Chicago and for all of those who are a special part of the DePaul College Prep family. We have laid a strong foundation, but we have more to do. With your help and support, we will achieve success. I'm so grateful for all you do for DePaul College Prep. Now let's keep moving forward together. Come, build with us. We're building. We're building. We're building. We're building for all of us. The Midwest Premier League Men's Soccer. Tonight, Chicago House AC hosts Chicago Chonany Yaswo live from DePaul College Prep in Chicago, Illinois. Live stream game coverage brought to you by Recruitlings. It's game time.
Good evening and welcome to this presentation of Chicago House Athletic Club Midwest Premier League action from DePaul College Prep in the North Center neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois, as the house hosts Chicago Charney Yazwo in Midwest Premier League action, a humid but pleasant Saturday summer evening here in Chicago. Charney Yazwo come in with two wins, no draws and one loss. Chicago House and even one, one and one, one win, one draw, and one loss entering the evening. Of course, their year so far having been highlighted been by their run in the U.S. Open Cup. A quick rundown of the starting lineups. First for visiting Charney Yazwo. In goals, number one, Daniel Dominguez. Number 17, Zach Gamster. Number 23, Mike Chaworski. Number seven, Lukas Chichesniak. Number four, Alex Gomez. Number 10, Marcin Keita. Number nine, David Shiflarski. Number two, Anthony Marmalejo. Number 16, Jared Urueta. Number 19, Manuel Santiago. And number 15, Jeffrey Ogboku. The head coach of Charney Yazwo is Mac Orlovsky. Meanwhile, for Chicago House in goal is number 18, Tony Halterman. The back four from right to left are number seven, Elias McLeod. Number 22, John Alzate. Number two, Jack Kramer. And number 15, Pau Mateo Chacon. In midfield are number 27, Damian Ayamarino. Number 14, A.R. Smith and number 11, Georgie Spasov. In the front three are number 94, Damon Almazan, number six, Jasper Waddington, and number 21, Daniel Hayes. How's our coach by Matt Poland? Teams walking out to the center circle here at DePaul College Prep. A hotbed of high schools right around this area. Lane Tech you might see off in the distance just to the north on the left of your screen tonight. Charney Yazwo in all white, House in all black with the orange and green accents. House having made lots of changes from their most recent game. Referees in red tonight. Beautiful night for soccer here in Chicago and there's no shortage of games going on in the city tonight. Several Midwest Premier League matchups kicking off right now as well. Red Stars are in action down in Bridgeview and the Fire are in action at Soldier Field. And we thank you for being here with us though for Midwest Premier League action as Charney Yazwo take on the house. House as usual tonight will be captained by number 14, A.R. Smith. The captain for Charney Yazwo is number seven, Lukas Szczesniak. One of a couple numbers, members, excuse me, a couple sets of brothers in the Charney Yazwo organization. It'll be House to get us started going from right to left. Georgie Spasov has the ball down on the center circle. Checking with the goalkeepers. Checks with the benches. And we are underway here at DePaul College Prep House in possession to start things off here tonight. Near side at left back, that is Daniel Hayes. Knocked loose to the near side and just cleared forward by House. Headed back the other way, that header won by Shaflarski. And out of play for attorney Yazwo throw. Damon Almazan flicking that infield, looking for Smith. Smith able to find Alzate. Field. I'm not sure who's in 29 tonight for House. We have to double check that one. Elias McLeod is wearing number 29 instead of number seven as previously thought. 
the back post and it's just beyond the run there of number 27, Damian Iamarino. Almost there to tap it in, but it was flicked away for what will be the game's first corner. Looks like it's Alzate over to take. House players gather around the top of the penalty area. Out swinging corner into the middle. Heads go up and a free header goes wide. That's Chacon who had a very good look at that, the center back. But that chance for the moment goes begging. It'll be a throw in on the near side for Charlie Oswald. Battle for back out there to Hayes. Looking to turn up the line for A.R. Smith as that pinballs around. Nice tackle there by Smith, or so it looked. Referee will say free kick instead for a foul committed against number 16, Jared Urueta. Mike Schiflarski sends it to his center back partner, Santiago. Schiflarski, who just graduated from Benedictine, played 35 games, starting 34 of them in three years for the Eagles. Turned over, Almazan, beaten to it, but gets it right back. Damon Almazan, tricky left winger, here down the line for the house. Broken up, but falls to Alzate, whose touch let him down. Clearance was deflected, now in the possession of Santiago. Is Lukas Krzyzewniak. Played his college ball at Lewis back in the day, but graduated in 2015. Previously played for RWB Adria in the Midwest Premier League before joining up with Charney Yazwo. That ball will bounce all the way through to Tony Halterman, the house goalkeeper in all yellow tonight, who of course was the late hero in the Open Cup win over Bavarians, making a vital save on what proved to be more or less the last kick of the game. Sent forward by Waddington for the run of Georgie Spasov. Spasov first time cross, Almazan won't get there. And clearing away is David Shiflarski. Only as far though as Elias McLeod, A.R. Smith, Back out wide, here's Spasov again. Spasov does, does, does Plains, Illinois, excuse me, native. As that's cleared the other way. And back to retrieve for house is Waddington. So far, it looks like it's going to be a lonely job at striker tonight for Jeffrey Ogboku, number 15 in white for Charney Yazwo. Four and a half minutes in, and House have had most of the ball so far. Waddington. No pressure here as he goes back to Halterman. Dacon in to midfield for the turn of Alzate. Here's Kramer, the right back on the far side. Flicked on there by Iamarino. A.R. Smith on the end of it, doing well to hold possession and bring Kramer into the play. That'll just evade Alzate. Loose ball was poked away temporarily by McLeod before it was scooped up by Marcin Keita. Santiago back for the safety of Alex Gomez, dropping between the center backs, the defensive midfielder for the visitors. Gomez, a rising junior at Triton College. Very strong Triton representation on this Charney Yazwo roster. Gomez looking for the crossfield ball and the run here of Keita. Halterman, though, right at the edge of his penalty area. That line is a little hard to see maybe, but we are working with the light blue lines on the field tonight. The red lines being for lacrosse. Also interesting to see that the soccer lines of this field are actually slightly shorter than the full 120 yards of the football field. 
soccer fields don't have to be 120 yards in length, but generally on these dual-use fields, it's what you see. First chance, looking to run in behind there was Agboku. Well cut up by House, and A.R. Smith does well to control. He asks for a foul, and he receives the call. Infraction was committed by Keita, another Triton alum. Six goals and 18 assists in his lone year at Triton. Absolutely dominating the league that season. Almas on. Tracon. Looking for the diagonal to the far side for Aya Marino. Does well to bring that down. Aya Marino, right footed cross, is blocked by Lukas Szczesniak. And it will be a house corner on the far side. One in addition, Damian Aya Marino has been for this house roster this year. A former Canadian under 17 international. Has citizenship in the United States, Canada, and Italy, and was most recently playing in Serie D, the fourth tier of Italian football. Or Italian calcio, I suppose I should say. Alzate with the corner out, swinger into the middle, headed away first time by Gamster. I am Marino trying to run it down. Working in control there is Keita. And he's won himself a throw in. Alex Campbell with you from DePaul College Prep here on the north side of Chicago. Thanks for joining me for Chicago House AC Soccer here in Midwest Premier League action. As Pau Mateo Chacon goes back for his goalkeeper, Tony Halterman. Contributing now for Jasper Waddington. allowed to walk all the way to midfield. He'll send this ball long. Alzate's making the run from midfield. Chichesniak did well initially to avert the danger. But stepping in to intercept again was McLeod. Before that's given back to Charney Yazwo. Keita looking for the run forward of Agboku. But still the big striker without a touch in this match. And we've played eight and a half minutes of it. Basov putting a lot of pressure there as this is played back to the visiting goalkeeper, Daniel Dominguez. Previously was a goalkeeper at Dominican in Division Three. Gomez once again dropping between the center backs in possession. Good pressure there by Alzate. As House looked to force the issue even out of possession. That was almost to give away to Spasov. Nice awareness there by Gomez to flick it away at the last possible moment, as that'll be a throw for Charny Yazwo. Take it by Gamster. Gomez looking to flick it on, but sent that right to Elias McLeod. Spasov trying to bring that under control, and it's Kicked right off his face as Gamster tried to clear and Spasov crumbles. Obviously no intent and totally incidental. It's unfortunate there for Georgi Spasov. His second year with House. Spasov quickly back to his feet, number 11 in black. And I think it's going to be a free kick rather than a header for a foul by Daniel Hayes. Can this be an opportunity for Charney Yazwo to get into the attack? Yet to really have any possession of the ball in the attacking third so far in this game. Will be Alex Gomez to take, left footed, swinging it all the way toward the far side of the field, headed toward goal, flicked on, still up in the air, Keita trying to do it himself, Alzate hit it back toward his own goal, not once but twice, is he going to get away with it? He is, I'm not quite sure what John Alzate was thinking there, I think any direction would have been better than going back toward his own goal, but it was last off a Charney Yazwo player and so it will be a goal kick for Tony Halterman. Halterman, who played at DePaul in Indiana over a decade ago in college. Has played some indoor professional soccer. 
a common feature of a lot of players in the Midwest Premier League. Several of them spend their fall through spring playing professional indoor, largely out on the East Coast. Click on there by Aya Marino. Spasov on the chase here for House. Good sliding challenge was put in there by Santiago. House win it back, crossing in. Almazan, first time left footed. Way over the top. Would have been an impressive finish. It would have been impressive for him to even get that on target, let alone to score it. And it's a goal kick to be taken by Dominguez. Johnny Oswald looking to play out of the back, hitting this one long in the direction of Agboku. And finally, for the first time tonight, he's on the ball. Agboku cutting back onto his left, chipping to the middle, and it's just ahead of a teammate. Almost a great opportunity there, but Charney Oswald will hold possession as Keita goes back for Gamster. Gomez. It was Anthony Marmalejo who scored in Yazo's last game, who nearly was there for the tap-in. But Jeffrey Agboku showing how dangerous he can be with that ability to hold up possession and then take defenders on on the dribble. Zach Gamster to take this throw, looking to launch it into the penalty area. Keita flicking it back to the middle. Having his sights on it there was number 16, Jared Urueta. Urueta, excuse me. But it was cleared away by House before he could have a swing at it. 13 minutes played here in this first half. Throw in by Daniel Hayes for House. Spasov looking to hold things up. He is fouled by Mike Shiflarski. Free kick for House right at midfield. Waddington launching this ball down the far side. Kramer, the right back, and made the run. He gives a thumbs up for the attempted pass. Throw in for Lukas Chichesniak on the far side. Well done there by Kramer to win the header. Amazon leaving it for Smith. Nice combination. A.R. Smith will have a go with his left boot, but it sails high and wide. A couple of warning shots from House, but nothing more so far in this first half. Neither keeper yet with a save to make. Dominguez launching forward. Agboku got in there, but only headed it back toward his own goal. Spasov trying to leave it there for Aya Marino. And is the offside flag going to go up? Well, it's not going to matter in the end as Alzate never really had a chance at that one as it rolls through to Dominguez. Dominguez, who kept a goals against average under one in his collegiate career. Chacon clears. That's going to be an interesting matchup throughout the game. Agboku noticeably tall and strong looking. He's got to be about 6'2 or 6'3 at least. And it is not a tall center back pairing out there tonight for House. The tallest man in the back line is Jack Kramer at 6'1 at right back. Chacon, Hayes, Almazan. Ball into the middle of the field. No one's there. As Gomez will step up to take it away, he'll have a hit from distance. And you can't blame him given how little attacking opportunity there's been. But immediately... Marcin Keita turned to him and gave him a bit of a relaxed signal as if to say, I know that's an exciting opportunity, but if the other team's gonna hand us the ball on a plate like that 30 yards from goal, let's be smart about this. Again, still no shots on target for either side. Nothing more than warning shots. Waddington. Flicked along the line. I Marino trying to get there, battling with Lukas Chesniak. Shaflarski turning with it. A.R. Smith trying to break it up. Some space now for Urueta. Near side for Keita. Overlapping here is Gamster. Gamster right footed cross toward the far post. It's flicked away by Kramer before it could fall for Krzyzewniak. And 
that's eventually out for a throw for House. Room to turn here for Elias McLeod, former University of Illinois Chicago player, given away by Almazan. And suddenly, Charney Yazwo have some life. Some spark in this match, taken quickly here by Gomez, looking for Keita. Hayes bringing it down, he's gotta be careful, shouts for handball, and the referee points to the penalty spot. It wasn't a clean touch, he was under pressure, Daniel Hayes, and he flicked the ball up onto his own hand. And I mentioned that Charney Yazwo were just getting into the match, well now they have a golden opportunity to take the lead from 12 yards out. And it looks like it's gonna be number four, Alex Gomez, to take as he receives the ball from Martin Keita. Gomez, one of those guys out there who has played professional indoor soccer. And he's one on one here with the veteran goalkeeper, Tony Halterman. It'll be left footed from Gomez. Gomez against Halterman, and he scores. A good penalty into the bottom right-hand corner, strongly and well taken. And in the 18th minute, Charney Oswo take the lead. So after such an impressive and positive start for House, the self-inflicted wound that leads to a penalty kick dispatched by Alex Gomez, and the visitors have both the momentum of the last five to 10 minutes and the lead. If you're Daniel Hayes, you just gotta shake that one off. Wouldn't expect House to change their game plan all too much. Had by far the majority of the ball so far. But again, just as Charney Yaswo were getting into this game, they are gift wrapped the best chance so far and they've made it count. Hayes for Almazon. Chacon, curving it down the near sideline and unable to control that one. Difficult spot to do so for John Alzate. Just finished his senior year at Taylor University Alzate, native of Medellin, Colombia. And that's going to be a foul committed by Agboku and a free kick for House. Referee wants the free kick retaken. He says the ball never came to a complete rest. Lots of house players streaming forward here. Lots of defending to do for Luka Chesniak. And he did very well under pressure there from a combination of Spasov, Smith, and Aya Marino. Kramer to take the throw in on the far side. I am Marino flicking it just into a crowd of opposition players. But the clearance was well dealt with by Waddington. Hayes. Amazon. Wins a throw. Chicago House have a full 11 substitutes dressed on their bench tonight. Meanwhile, just six players in reserve for Charney Yazwo. Hayes looking to knock that forward. Spasov applying the pressure. Cloud surveying his options. Looks to float this for Aya Marino. That's a perfect ball, but the flag is up on the far side. Aya Marino having gone just a moment too soon. Free 
kick taken by Manuel Santiago. Hayes calmly finding his teammate McLeod here. Almazan's on the run down the near side, but the ball will reach the end line before he does. It'll be a throw in. A.R. Smith, I. Marino, cutting inside, looking for Almazan, cleared away by Gamster. Akboku, unable to initially control. But in the end, he's going to be fouled by McLeod. Akboku, again, largely a passenger to this game so far, but he has made an impact in brief spurts. Chesniak, unable to find a teammate as that's booted into the stands on the far side by Jasper Waddington. Throw and looking for Keita, he's one on one with Hayes. Hayes, in the end, I think incidentally flicked that back to Halterman, worked out well. Damon Almazan with some room now down the near side. Almazan through the middle, Spasov, and Got the ball first, Georgi Spasov. Sliding challenge, we'll see a yellow card produced for Manuel Santiago. So Santiago picks up the yellow card. And Charney Yazwo, I think, are asking the question, if that's a yellow card, why was that challenge a couple moments ago on a Boku not one as well? But when you leave your feet that way and clearly only get the man, the yellow card is always liable to come out. John Alzate standing over this set piece opportunity here for Chicago House as they look to equalize. Seven house players standing at the top of the 18 yard box. Right now a three man wall for Charney Yazwo will be changed to a two-man wall. Elzate does have Almazan short as an option. Could be a chance for Almazan to dribble in and shoot or pass if Elzate elects to go that way. Elzate will swing it into the penalty area. Heads go up, initially headed away by Charney Oswo. Trying to work his way clear is Urueta. And in the end, he just boots it down the far side where it will be collected by Halterman. A little past halfway in this first half, 1-0 in favor of the visitors on an 18th minute penalty kick from Alex Gomez. Down the far side, Kramer is racing forward, but doing well to track back and get in the way was Chichesniak. Yellow card caution is finished by Chichani Yasuo, number 19, Manuel Santiago in the 23rd minute. Dominguez to take the goal kick. Flicked on by Agboku. Keita, Agboku again. Kramer there defending. A few players colliding, and Kramer briefly had possession before it was flicked back the other way. Agboku goes to ground. And now he's down Agboku in some pain, it looks like. Looks like it's going to be a house throw, I believe. But Jeffrey Ogboku certainly taking no shortage of contact so far in this match. In the end, it will be a house free kick to restart play. Chacon dribbling his way into midfield. Alzate, Spasov, great first time ball. Aya Marino could be in, it deflects and goes wide. A vital, vital block made by Luka Szczesniak to send that wide to the target. Great quick passing by House, but in the end it's just a corner. Hey, 
Have to imagine that Damian I. Marino's eyes lit up with that opportunity. John Alzate to take. Right footed out swinger. It's in low and easily cleared right back out for a throw in as it deflects off the assistant on the far side. Krzyzewniak once again doing the defending. House have not been able to produce off numerous set pieces already in this game. We'll do it all over again with another throw there on the far side to be taken by Kramer. In for Alzate. Alzate working with two defenders. A.R. Smith there. Smith along the end line, cutting it back. Blocked away. Alzate couldn't find it. Chichesniak now clears it as far as McLeod, but he gives it away right to Ugboku. Could be an odd man rush now if they hurry. Charney Yazbo. Referee says no foul as that rolls through to Halterman. Game getting increasingly physical in these last couple of minutes. Agboku was down again there for a moment. This ball comes right to him though as soon as he stands back up. Keita. Gomez, the goal scorer, who's been everywhere. Defensive midfield, winger, center back. He's just kind of floating around and has the license to do so. Keita's made the run to the near corner. He'll just keep this in. Back for Gomez. Time to put it across, drives it in low. Agboku gets a boot to it, and Almazan will boot it anywhere. And Agboku has sat back down again, and looks like he may have a more serious problem. And somebody's gotten off the bench. A couple of players have gotten up off the bench to get loose for Charney Oswo. As it looks like Agboku might need to come out of this game. For anyone who tuned into the UEFA Men's Champions League final earlier today, we saw unfortunate scenes for Manchester City's Kevin De Bruyne, star of that team having to be subbed out midway through the first half due to an injury. Teammates trying to help Agboku stretch out here, but generally when you see a player just sit down that usually means their day is going to be over. Agboku gives a thumbs up to the bench, so I think he's going to try to continue at least for now, but we could see a substitution sooner rather than later for the visitors. As in the stoppage, the clock has ticked into the 30th minute. 1-0 for Charney Yazwo on a penalty kick by Alex Gomez. House took the moment to take an impromptu timeout. As meanwhile, you've got Keita, Gamster, and Gomez in an animated discussion here along the near touchline. It's going to be a drop ball, I believe. And I would expect House to just boot this ball downfield back into Charney Yazwo for possession, excuse me. Boku, after going off, is going to come back into the game. We'll see how much longer he's able to go. As play resumes in Charney Oswell possession. Manuel Santiago under pressure there from Spasov. Dominguez. Chacon winning the header. Looking through into space. Almazan's there first. Almazan looking to squeeze it through for Ian Marino, but it was well read by Shiflarski. And now we've got a runner down the far side. Opportunity here, cutting in on his right. Shot is gobbled up by Halterman. Shot was taken there by number seven, I think. I believe that was Chichesniak, who was getting forward. I Marino. Kramer's ended up on the ground. Kramer will launch.
launched his free kick forward towards Spasov. He's able to flick it on into the winning grasp of Dominguez. Gamster. That ball deflects and spins out of play for a Charney Yazwo throw in the 32nd minute. But stoppage time more than guaranteed at this point. I'd imagine we're already probably set for three or four minutes of it. Akboku chesting that one down for Keita. Keita with Hayes putting on the pressure. Shiflarski. Chechesniak, excuse me, curves it to the middle. Chacon away and flicked further by Smith. As Spasov collides with Shiflarski. And it's going to be a Charney Yazwo free kick. Gomez on set piece duty once again. For Charney Oswo. Send this toward the far side. Headed slightly toward goal. In the end, it's going to be Halterman who collects it. The offside flag was up on the near side anyway. Slight chance of rain here in Chicago tonight. We can maybe on your screen see some clouds at points off in the distance that do look vaguely like rain, but a frequent condition of a humid day along Lake Michigan. Waddington. House have not really been able to wrestle any control back in this game since going behind in the 18th minute. McLeod sees that pass intercepted by Marmalejo. I'm Marino back helping out defensively. Kramer, the right back with the nice footwork. Spasov is on the run, but the flag is up. It looked like it was Mike Shiflarski who was the last defender, and it was close at the time of the pass. I think if that ball had been just a split second sooner, Spasov might have been in. Gamster closed down by Amazon. Alzate. Nutmegs an opponent and gets it right back. Not sure he meant any of that, but it worked out for House. Amazon through the middle between players and an unnecessary slide there by Santiago is going to gift House a corner. Again, the home side have not been making any chances out of their frequent set pieces in the first 35 minutes of this game. But here's a chance for them to accept a gift much in the way that Charney Oswo accepted one for the opener. Elzate, as usual, on corner duty. It'll be an in-swinger toward the far post. Punched away first time by Dominguez and then cleared. Only as far as Elzate again. Toward the far post again. Heads up, out of play. Referee says goal kick. Better delivery, though, by Elzate on that occasion. Chesniak wins a, no, it's going to be last off of Chesniak, a double deflection. We'll see it be a house throw in in front of the Charney Yazwo bench. Kramer, back for Waddington. Hayes on the near side, closed down by Keita. Here's Almazan. Forward ball, looking for the run of Alzate. Almazan. Almazan skips by one defender, was cleared away. Hayes sends it forward, only finds Dominguez. Agboku battling there with Waddington and winning that battle. Agboku had a shot that was blocked by McLeod, who's able to find Alzate. But in the end, it's going to be a house free kick. Referee had played advantage to the foul by Agboku, non materialized. McLeod asking for a yellow card for Agboku kicking the ball away, but when you kick it right off the metal bleacher base that's three yards out of bounds, it's hard to argue that that caused a significant delay in play. Almazan cutting inside onto his right foot. 
Playing it through for I Marino. Perfect ball. I Marino will get there first. No, Dominguez got a touch, but I Marino puts it in the open goal. And no, the offside flag is up. It will not count. Still, great initial goalkeeping, you have to say, by Dominguez to get a touch on it, but the awareness by I Marino to know that the goal was just open. But once again, the offside flag denies House. Their forwards have been right on the edge in this first half. Is an equalizer getting closer? Under 10 minutes to go of normal time in this first half. 1-0 on an 18 minute Alex Gomez penalty. Alzate couldn't hold on to possession there. Keita shaking off the challenge of Alzate and winning a throw in. been cool to see that Ronald McDonald House has remained the front of shirt sponsor if you will. Sponsor doesn't feel like quite the right word for Chicago House. Began as a fundraising campaign during the Open Cup run. Smith and I Marino exchanging passes. Alzate first time ball just scooping it out toward the far side. Spasov putting on the pressure. Krzyzewniak left with no choice but to head it out of play for a house throw. A.R. Smith, I. Marino, not quite on the same page there with Kramer, and this will be a goal kick. <laughs> Elsewhere in the Chicago soccer landscape, things not going well in Bridgeview. The Red Stars trail the North Carolina Courage 3-0 in the 51st minute. Meanwhile, the Fire and the Columbus Crew nodded at zeros, 36 minutes in at Soldier Field. Throw in for Charney Yaswal on the far side. Urieta backing in to McLeod, coming together there on the far side. Will be another free kick for the home side. Taking quickly and taking short. Chacon chipping it forward. Spasov knocking it down. El Zate just over the top. One of the better looks House have had. Just too much loft on that one by John Elzate. Good center forward work though by Spasov to chest that down to his teammate. Two big men for Charney Yazwo, Gamster and Iboku colliding. Almazan won't quite keep this in play. Almazan, who of course made history a couple years ago, he became the first Midwest Premier League player to have a transfer fee paid for his services when he joined House, then in Nisa from Steel City, who are based in Joliet. House are out there for their last game in the Juliet Slammers baseball stadium. Gomez finding Gamster. Agboku battling with Chacon. The two number 15s doing battle. Agboku doesn't quite keep that ball in along the end line. It will be a goal kick. Under five minutes plus stoppage time left here in this first half. Under pressure there and doing well was McLeod. But that long ball won't find any teammates. Dominguez taking his time. Cone winning that header out of the air. Nice pass there by McLeod to find Alzate in the pocket. Here's A.R. Smith. Spasov dropping into space. Spasov, great challenge there by Gamsters. That ball was looking for Almazan. Gomez taking over. 
Kaflarski, Almazan working his way back and poking the ball loose. Hayes, well done there, a full team effort by House to win that ball back. Smith room to turn. Kramer chipping that ball long. No one had made the run. I Marino is going to give it a shot down toward the corner, and in the end, he'll give away a free kick. able to win that ball at midfield. Alzate back for McLeod. Once again, it's Gomez who seems to be at the center of everything, almost giving that one away. Sliding challenge to win it back by Alzate. Smith, Aya Marino, referee playing advantage. Still Aya Marino looked for Alzate. Aya Marino still. Almazan cutting onto his right. The shot is off the crossbar. Did Dominguez get a touch? I don't think so. The referee agrees. It's a goal kick. That is the position Damon Almazan wants to be in, cutting in on that right foot and looking to curl one. Once again, House go close, but still trail here in the 43rd minute. Boku couldn't control that one, but it's given right back away to guess who? Gomez. Chipping it down the far side. Great outside of the boot pass there for Marmolejo. Gomez again popping up somewhere different. To the near side, here's Keita. Keita will send it back the other way. Had her one out of the air by Waddington. Only cleared those far as David Shiflarski. I think Alex Gomez, number four in white, has already run several miles in this first half. And he's got a goal to be rewarded with for his immense effort. Krzyzewniak working down the far side. One on one here with Kramer. Krzyzewniak wins a free kick. And a dangerous opportunity here for Charney Oswo late in this first half. And that was an awkward fall. Lukas Krzyzewniak has gone down holding his right knee. And a yellow card was just produced, I believe, for Kramer as well. So Jack Kramer becomes the first house player in the books tonight. And now an opportunity. Charney Oswald will look to double their lead. Only two minutes are going to be added on to stoppage time, despite the fact that I would have expected much more, but often in the Midwest Premier League, you don't see as much as you expect. Free kick right into the wall was blocked by Ian Marino, and the follow-up soars over the bar and out for a goal kick. The call this indicated that a minimum of two minutes of extra time in the second half. Chacon. Waddington, as we are now into that minimum of two minutes of added time. Halterman, maybe one last opportunity here for House to look to get forward and create one more chance to try to equalize here late in the first half. Flicked on there by Aya Marino. McLeod heads it back forward. Spasov jumping for it, lands at his feet. Still Spasov knocks it forward. It looked like he might have caught a, a square, a stray cleat, I should say. The referee blows for half time. I don't even know if that was the minimum of two minutes, but we are at the break either way. It is a 1-0 lead for Charney Yazwo at the break. An 18th minute penalty kick by Alex Gomez, the difference so far. 
Damon Almazan late in the half hit the crossbar. That is the closest the hosts have come. The players and we will take a break for halftime. You're watching Midwest Premier League action with Chicago House AC. We'll be back soon for the second half. Hi, my name is Brian Koenig. I am the president of Soccer 2000. We are a soccer specialty store located in Downers Grove. We specialize in servicing club uniforms and a personalized retail experience. Our staff at Soccer 2000 live, eat, and breathe soccer. When you come into Soccer 2000, you're gonna be talking to somebody who knows the sport. So if you have questions about footwear, you're gonna get answers. If you have questions about the replica jerseys, you're gonna get answers because that is our expertise. Soccer 2000 has an exclusive team center that includes a wide variety of uniform kits from the top manufacturers to help your club choose the next kit that will make you guys look great on the field. Soccer 2000 provides exceptional individual and club service. Contact us at 630-241-9500 or find us online at soccer2000.com. We're building. building. We're building. An academic wing. An athletic complex. A library. A modern campus. Family. Tradition. School spirit. Respect. We're building. We're, We're building. building. We're building. Success. Champions. Legacy. Leaders. Excellence. Health. Inclusion. A Vincentian mission. Community. We're building. We're building. Estamos construyendo. We're building DePaul College Prep. Since our founding in 2014, we have been building something incredible at DePaul College Prep. We've built a name, a campus, and a welcoming community. We've built upon the service-focused charism of the Vincentians. We've built on the foundation of a diverse, exciting, and beautiful city. We've built the curriculum and programs to provide a rigorous Vincentian Catholic College Prep education. We've built a community who live out our mission and vision. At DePaul College Prep, we truly are building in so many ways and have been since laying the foundation in 2014. We are so proud to see our students, faculty, and alumni immersed in our mission of teaching, learning, faith, and service. And we're grateful for the young women and men who have been a special part of our school community over the past nine years and who strive to have a positive impact in our neighborhoods, our city, and our world. The energy around our community of faith and learning is palpable. Our enrollment has risen every year since our founding in 2014. We will soon welcome more than 1,100 students who come to us from nearly 60 different zip codes from around the city. Lots of us come from different backgrounds and religious affiliations, but at the same time, we don't really take that into account because we all come together and we support each other in what we believe in. And so I feel like that support system is very important in building an inclusive community. It just feels like a big family. Like everyone goes back to the community because of how welcoming it is and how like easy it is to make friends here. My favorite part of being a student here at DePaul College Prep is just the family and the community that we have built here. They're always encouraging students to be heard and to put their voice out there, whether it's a new club being made or some type of after-school activity. At the core of DePaul College Prep's growth is the people who work hard to make our vision a reality. Our leadership and faculty have designed a rigorous curriculum paired with meaningful co-curricular programming. Our academic partnership with DePaul University, dedicated faculty, 
innovative curriculum and welcoming community creates an environment that encourages intellectual curiosity and values each student. We have teachers and coaches who align with our mission and help support our students' success in academics, athletics, activities, and personal and spiritual development. We provide modern spaces and technology needed to serve our community. And as we speak, the addition of our much needed South Academic Wing is underway and will open in the fall of 2023. This extension will include 19 classrooms, two science labs, and a dining space. Our most important work is helping to form young women and men who are ready for college, university, and life. We are already seeing the fruits of our labor as our graduates matriculate at a rich array of nationally ranked colleges and universities across the country and are beginning their careers in a multitude of industries. The success of DePaul Prep students and alumni has helped ignite the school's growth and has established the school as a community anchor. As someone who's been a part of the DePaul College Prep family since day one, I am humbled by the interest and support of our students and families from our surrounding neighborhoods and across the city. And it's not just that we've seen the enrollment numbers go up, which is critical, but it's about each and every student we serve. DePaul Prep is a special community. These are talented, caring, smart, young women and men who want to contribute to what we are building here. As we evaluated schools, we were really impressed with the foundation that's been built here at DePaul, but now that we're a part of this, we feel like we're a part of something that's building, and I've moved from being impressed to really being proud. At DePaul Prep, I remember my first day walking in, I'm like, okay, I got some big shoes to fill, and ever since that day, it's made me into who I am. When I started at DePaul Prep, I was definitely not the best student. Never imagined that I was even going to get into college, let alone like have all these options, I've right now 12 options of college. When our oldest Cole was in the college process, who is now a freshman at Notre Dame, he was able to have many selections of colleges and we credit to Paul Prep for setting him up, as well as our son John, with college options. And that is what we're most proud of for our boys. All the construction that's been put into the school, I'm excited to see where it will lead us for my little sister and future students. Everything's changing in a new school, but I think it's something special and I think it's something that not every kid gets to experience. The last nine years have brought to Paul College Prep its new campus in Roscoe Village, a multi-sport stadium, the David J. and Carrie R. Carlson Library, a fitness center, multiple labs, and other facilities that have helped create a future-ready environment for our students and teachers. As the school's 10th anniversary nears, continued growth is on the horizon. We're building DePaul College Prep. We ask ourselves St. Vincent DePaul's central question, what must be done? And then we answer that question by building. By building DePaul Prep, to be a leader in academics, in faith life, in the social and emotional wellness of our students, and by building our physical campus to be a community anchor for the city of Chicago and its families. With the academic facilities now safely secured, we turn our attention to building our endowment for scholarships and building our indoor athletic complex to complement our modern outdoor stadium. The indoor athletic complex is an essential element for the vibrancy and education of the DePaul Prep community. It's more than a home for our student athletes and teams. It's spaces for our health and wellness and gym classes, and a place for the DePaul Prep community to come together for pep rallies, assemblies, dances, all school masses, and important school ceremonies. Will you help make tonight our most successful step forward in our plans to build DePaul College Prep? Build with us, not only to mark our first 10 years, build with us so that 20, 30, 50 years from now and beyond, we can all be proud of what we've accomplished for the families of Chicago and for all of those who are a special part of the DePaul College Prep family. We have laid a strong foundation, but we have more to do. With your help and support, we will achieve success. I'm so grateful for all you do for DePaul College Prep. Now let's keep moving forward together. Come, 
filled with us. We're building! We're building! We're building! We're building for all of us!
Illinois in this Midwest Premier League matchup between visiting Charney Yazwo and Chicago House AC. The visitors with a 1-0 lead at the break, courtesy of an 18th minute penalty kick by Alex Gomez after Daniel Hayes was called for a handball. House did have some looks later in the half. John Alzate blazed a shot not too far over the bar. And then Damon Almazan hit the crossbar. Doesn't look like there will be any substitutions for either side as we get ready to start the second half. Charney Oswo will be going from right to left in their all white kits in this second half. Chicago House in black going from left to right, 45 minutes. Forty-five minutes left in this one for House to try to turn things around. As the referees get ready to restart play, I'm Alex Campbell with you for Chicago House AC action. Thanks for spending some of your Saturday evening in the house. Charney Oswell will get things underway here at the start of the second half. And it looks like Jeffrey Ogboku is still good to continue after I thought at one point in that first half he would have to be subbed off due to an injury. The Charney Yazwo striker. on the referee's signal is Marcin Keita. And the second half is underway. Immediately, Georgie Spasov shot out of a cannon into the press. The house striker. Launched long. Too heavy a first touch there by Amar Malejo. Chesniak back for Gomez and now Chesniak again. Marmalejo turning inside, finding space, cutting to the middle, shooting opportunity is dragged just wide. The left footed shot by Jared Rueta had Tony Halterman rooted to the spot. That could have just rolled inside the post for 2 0 and would have been a perfect start to the second half for Charney Yazwo. Luckily for the home team, though, the ball bounced just wide of the target. Chacon finding Waddington. Kramer. Aya Marino wins a throw in. Now, once again, we've got a Charney Yazwo player who's down on the turf. Trying to see who it is who is that's stricken at the moment. It looks like it's one of the center backs, number 19, Manuel Santiago. Santiago helps back to his feet. Waddington with the crossfield ball looking for A.R. Smith. No, excuse me, looking for Daniel Hayes, the left back who's wide to the far side. Hayes looking to cross. That was blocked uncomfortably by, I believe that is Zach Gamster. And sometimes you just get unlucky with where a cross like that hits you. Gamster might need a moment to collect himself. Immediately over to ask how he is is Keita. But time bleeding off the clock will not be a hindrance to Charney Oswo, given the lead. 
training staff briefly coming out to have a word with the Gamster here. Good to see Gamster get back to his feet. May have to come out of the game very briefly because a stoppage was required to attend to him. Georgi Spasov says thank you very much for the water. So Gamster briefly to the sidelines, but I imagine he'll be waved right back on. Drop ball, house in possession. They'll play it back here for McLeod. Kramer, crossfield ball, looking for Almazan. Good first touch for Damon in some space. Tackled away initially by Keita, who's filling in as an emergency right back while Gamster is still off the field. Meanwhile, could we have a yellow card here against House as pulled down was Urueta. And certainly I think that qualifies as not playing the ball and stopping an attack. So I'm surprised that the yellow card is not being produced here for whoever committed the foul. And it looks like Urueta's in some pain now. Gamster is about to be waved back on on the far side, but Charney Oswald might have other problems. Rueta, who just moments into this second half, came inches away from doubling the visitors' lead. And still, Charney Oswald players asking the question, where's the yellow card? Captain Luka Szczesniak getting involved and having his say. No cards for anyone for the moment. As Gomez stands over the free kick right at midfield. Swinging it to the far side was looking for Keita, but it was easily won out of the air by Hayes. Hayes under pressure there from Gamster. Give it away to Keita. Keita around one defender, and it's going to be another free kick. This time it's Daniel Hayes who commits the infraction. More time runs off the clock, and another set piece opportunity coming for Charney Oswo. And now we've got a yellow card produced. Daniel Hayes goes into the book. He's the second house player to be booked, number 21. Trying to see if once again is that Rueta who's again found himself on the ground. Excuse me, this time it's Marcin Keita who is limping as he gets back to his feet. A few subs going through their paces for both teams. As Gomez prepares for yet another set piece delivery. Gomez looking to swing this in with his left foot. Toward goal, claimed by Halterman. Halterman looking to get House going in a hurry, but Gomez, who's covering half the field tonight, it feels like, intercepts before shooting wide from a long way out. Jacone played that against the back of Keita.
McLeod looking to play it over the top. Too strong and easily claimed by Daniel Dominguez. Dominguez making sure to take a few extra seconds off the clock. Only in the 53rd minute, but every few seconds does matter and add up in the end. Especially when we saw in the first half only two added minutes of time when I think we would have expected four or five. A.R. Smith knocking that back forward. Akboku trying to get in behind here is Marmolejo, but in the end it'll roll for Halterman. Almazan. Elzate into the feet of Spasov, giving and going. Elzate again, but it was well read and closed down there by the Chernyazwo midfield. Another ball played in behind will simply be cleared out for a house throw in. With David Shaflarski doing some good defending in midfield there for Chernyazwo. Bouncing ball forward, stooping to head it is Gamster. Could fall here for Aya Marino onto his left. Still Aya Marino, great sliding challenge. And then the shot by Amazon is sliced high and wide. What an effort defensively by Mike Shaflarski to make himself big and deny the opportunity for Damian Aya Marino to set up on his left foot for a shot. 10 minutes gone almost now in this second half. As Charney Yaz will continue to lead 1-0. I'm Alex Campbell with you from DePaul College Prep on, a, on the north side of Chicago. A busy night in town in addition to the soccer. The Grateful Dead are performing their second of, weekend, of their weekend shows at Wrigley Field. Kramer winning that header. Krzyzewniak into the foot of Marmolejo. Reclaimed though by Elias McLeod. I am Marino back for Kramer. Waddington blasting this ball toward the far side where Almazan duels with the much taller Zach Gamster who clears, but only as far as Chacon. Chacon again looking long. Ian Marino again making a diagonal run. That's a dangerous header. Dominguez is scrambling, but in the end, he's able to claim it. Spasov and Ian Marino putting the pressure on, but in the end, the header back by Santiago got the job done. Santiago sending this one forward, looking for Agboku. Still no substitutions for either side as of yet. As I mentioned in the first half, it's a much more extensive bench tonight for Chicago House than for Charney Oswell. Elzate dispossessed. Marmolejo goes over, free kick for the visitors. House fans less than pleased with the call as Garcia and Krzyzewniak stand in the vicinity, but, he, but it looks like it'll be Gomez again. He'll take it short to Krzyzewniak, and the referee says not so fast. So with the element of surprise gone, Garcia will just swing this into the penalty area right to Halterman. And the referee is going to call a free kick. Foul committed by Agboku as a house player is down in the middle of the penalty area. Looks like a stray arm may be catching a house player. Believe that is Pao Mateo Chacon who ended up on the deck. Now an animated discussion as Chacon's back to his feet. Way restart. 
yards from Halterman. Looks like Chicago House are preparing to make a couple of substitutions. Keep an eye on that. You can see Shannon Seymour getting ready to come into the game. Dominguez has got to be careful there. He's very deliberately trying to avoid picking the ball up and redistributing it, redistributing it as much as he can, but there's been a couple times he's almost handed it right to a house player. Headed away there by Waddington. Here's A.R. Smith. Haven't called his name much in this second half. Nice header on. Here's Spasov. Zaya Marino, who found him? Georgie Spasov. Crossing. Blocked. Calls for handball. Referee says no. A.R. Smith. Gives it away. Charging the other way now. Here comes Charney Oslo. Is that a play for throwing on the near side? It was a Rueta who couldn't quite find the pass. Sent forward by Gomez again, and it was a volleyed effort there. What a chance for Urueta at the far post. I think Chacon thought that ball was soaring out of play. Maybe Halterman did as well, and in the end, it was Urueta meeting it with the top of his boot, just not able to keep it on target. Waddington giving room all the way to midfield. Urueta again. Pulled back by Smith. Referee keeping an eye on the situation awards the free kick. Shannon Seymour on the bench now in conversation with head coach Matt Poland. And Seymour will be the game's first change. Nice turn there by Agboku, battling with Chacon. Agboku goes down, referee says no. And it's a goal kick. House are going to make a double change. Seymour's been joined by someone else on the far sideline. Spasov making the run forward. One on one there with Santiago. I am Marino. Leaving it for Spasov. Georgie Spasov across the top of the box. Almazan. Damon on his left. Three defenders in his face. Almazan. Turning, crossing. Spasov over the top. A good challenge put in by Santiago to deny what looked like it was going to be a tap, and it's a corner kick in the end. Santiago preventing the equalizer. Some of the best defending we've seen tonight. And Charney Yazwo are also going to make a sub. So we'll have Georgie Spasov coming out of the game. It's a swung in. I am Marino. Couldn't control it. It could be a break the other way. Charging forward comes Krzyzewniak. Well done, though, by Damon Almazan to get back and break that up. Referee will stop things now, and here come the substitutions. Spasov and Almazan. No, excuse Spasov and Hayes are going off. Almazan's switching positions, so Spasov and Hayes are out. Shannon Seymour is in. And we've got a change up front as well. House are changing their formation up a bit, it looks like, and it go to a more aggressive 4-4-2. Alejandro Mentasti has also come in. Six foot one forward from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And Charney Yazwo in the midst of that made a change as well. Marcin Keita has gone off, and he's been replaced by David Mikulacic. House on the attack. They're playing basically a 4-4-2 now. Damon Almazan is a left midfielder. And Damian Iamarino is a right midfielder with Alzate playing in a front two with Mentasti. Seymour, the former Northwestern Wildcat back in his collegiate days. Meanwhile, Mentasti played his college ball at Culver Stockton. Played in USL League Two for the Chicago Dutch Lions last year. Out of play for a house throw in on the far side. 63rd minute now. 
as the home team continue to look for an equalizer. And head coach Matt Poland making some aggressive substitutions in pursuit of that. Smith, Almazan. Almazan one on one there with Mikolacic. Given away though, and just kept in play. Almazan trying to fight back there against Rueta. Throw in for Charney Yazwa on the far side. Trying to hold that up is Akboku. And that cross is straight behind. No, it will be a corner. It was deflected out by, I believe, one of the new arrivals into the game. I believe that was, actually, I don't know who's playing left back now that I think about it. It was somebody who was playing in midfield before. I believe it's now Elias McLeod who's dropped into the back line. Gomez preparing to take this corner for Charney Oswo. In swinger, bouncing to the near post and cleared away by Chacon. Swing and a miss there by Shaflarski. No pressure on him for the moment though. As he sends it back forward. Trying to chest that one down was his brother Mike, but the offside flag is up. Meanwhile, Soldier Field, Cucho Hernandez has scored for Columbus. They lead the fire 1-0. Nice turn by Shannon Seymour. Looking to slip it through. Can A.R. Smith get on the end of it? Smith, still A.R. Smith, captain's goal! 1-1, what an effort by the man with the armband as he wills that ball into the bottom corner and House have equalized here in the 65th minute. The man who scored the goal to equalize against forward Madison in the Open Cup. A man for the moment for the Chicago House side. He's found the equalizing goal. And just like that, 25 minutes plus stoppage time to go, we've got a new game. The turn by Shannon Seymour, what an impact sub he's been. A.R. Smith just willed his way to get on the end of that. And after shouldering off an opponent, pass the ball into the bottom corner. Charney Yazwa have made another change. Number six, Nathan Solarski is into the game. And it looks like he's gonna go in at left back. And number seven, Luka Krzyzewniak is gonna step forward to the left wing position. So I believe that means it is number two, Anthony Marmalejo, who has subbed off. But the attacking substitutions from Matt Poland have an immediate effect. Could they bear more fruit here as trying to chase this one down as Mentasti? I am Marino, leaving it for Kramer. Seymour. Ball played long well over the head of Agboku, who was expecting it to his chest or feet. You could just see when you watch Shannon Seymour play, he epitomizes the phrase in soccer that form is temporary, but class is permanent. He has a class left foot, and we saw that on that assist. That ball deflects awkwardly, and reacting well to it was Santiago. Referee had blown his whistle already, though. So the change that House made actually is they're basically playing a back three right now with Almazan and Aya Marino as wing backs and Elias McLeod as a very defensive, defensive midfielder. Not dissimilar to the way Manchester City have played this season as they fluidly switch between a back four and a back three comprised of nominally four center backs. Full-time in Bridgeview, North Carolina Courage, five. Chicago Red Stars, zero. 
And after consultation with the assistant referee, the referee is going to show a yellow card to Jeffrey Ogboku. Assistant referee must have seen something. Center referee did not. A.R. Smith almost playing as a left back at the moment, fading out to the far side. Much more fluid shape than the pretty straight up 4-3-3 house we're playing for the first hour. Breaking that one up was McLeod. Trying to get free, Chacon, how about that for a center back? Referee plays advantage. Chacon gives the way, and just too much time in a lap to bring that back for a free kick. Booted the other way, but this is all Tony Halterman. Again, A.R. Smith basically at left back here in buildup. Maybe that's a new assignment after he scored the equalizing goal instead of the very, very aggressive 3-5-2. House were playing there until the equalizer. Kramer into the feet there of Mentosti, but the give and go doesn't quite find Seymour at the other end of it. How will Charlie Yazlo respond? This game didn't really change state at all from minute 18 to minute 60 as the offside flag is up on the near side against Mentosti. Shannon Seymour, interestingly, was a teammate of Damon Almazan at Steel City. Over briefly, I'm not sure if they would have had time to play together before Almazan's move in early 2021. Mentosti, dealing it there for Aya Marino, and now Kramer. House looking calmer in possession now, much as they did in the early stages of, of this game. Seymour looking ahead for Alzate. Ball will bounce to Aya Marino. Ball's been stuck along this near sideline for a while now. Mentosti. Looks for the crossfield ball, was hoping for Almazan. In the end, it bends straight at Daniel Dominguez. 20 minutes plus stoppage time to go. Long ball brought down, as usual, by Agboku. And in the end, it's a free kick for House. Fouled by Agboku. Pulling back Elias McLeod. Agboku, who's one of those players on the yellow, has to be careful. To note that Jack Kramer is the only house player on the field right now with a yellow card. Manuel Santiago also has one for Charney Oslo. Krzyzewniak goes down to the edge of the penalty area. Referee doesn't indicate anything. Play goes on. Krzyzewniak still down just outside the 18-yard box. That cross is way up and over the top. Goal kick. Krzyzewniak back to his feet. Cone once again allowed to dribble out from the back. A.R. Smith. Smith in behind. Mentosti's on it. The flag has stayed down. Mentosti, big save by Dominguez. Corner kick for House and a big, big save by Dominguez to keep this game level. Sub upcoming for Charney Yaswell won't be made yet, but it's going to be Amir Hato, I believe, coming in. Corner kick swung in, Kramer. Boku, the striker, is going to be the man coming out. And we're going to
we're actually going to see a house sub first. This is interesting. Damien I. Marino's night is over. He certainly made a nuisance of himself to the Charney Yazwa defense on that right flank, but given the state of the game, there's a lot of attackers out there right now for Chicago House, and I wonder if Matt Poland is just looking to balance things back out a bit. So we'll see who the new player coming in for House is. Meanwhile, a corner kick on the near side. Out swinger headed back. Here's that new player, his first touches. Number 20, Aaron Wynn. That's cleared away though by the defense. So Wynn replaces Aya Marino. Aaron Wynn just graduated from UIC, has one of the better collegiate pedigrees on this house team. 62 games, 61 of them starts over his four years there. Damon Almazan could be in behind. Almazan to the end line looking across and it's cut out there and cleared away by Solarski. House looking increasingly dangerous since that equalizer. Will either side find a breakthrough? Chacon clearing that, but only as far as Urueta. A.R. Smith swarmed by defenders. How about that move? Just totally faked out. Mikulovic with that fake pass or clearance. Meanwhile, Urueta slow to get back to his feet there. Kramer looking to play the ball through. Sliding stop there by Mike Suflarski. And then a foul committed by Wynn. Free kick for the visitors here in the 75th minute of play. We're going to have a substitution. As entering the match is number 14, Amir Hato. And he replaces number 15, Jeffrey Okboku. We'll have to see if that's a straight swap up front. Initial impression is that it's going to be. Free kick taken short. Mike Shaflarski sending it through a crowd and finding a teammate. Turning shot is high and wide. And that's the new man, Hato, acquainting himself with the match. Seymour, first time ball to Kramer on the near side. Kramer chipping it, looking for Almazan. Flag is up. <laughs> 14 minutes plus stoppage time to go. 1-1 one, one here at DePaul College Prep in this Midwest Premier League Heartland Division matchup. House come into the night in 10th place on four points. Charney Yazwo in third with six, so it's a very crowded standings. Lots of parity in the Midwest Premier League Heartland this year. Some of the teams who struggled last season have certainly improved, and the gap between the best and the rest has closed more and more every year. Long ball for Mentosti to chase. Well dealt with initially, though, by Solarski who's had a couple of strong defensive interventions since subbing into the game. Here's Hato. David Javlarski. David is Mike's younger brother. Mentosti looking to turn, and it's gonna be a free kick. Good center forward play there by Mentosti. Foul committed by Mike Javlarski. And walking about 10 yards too far forward and taking that free kick was Elias McLeod. Play resuming here in the 78th minute. Good step there by Manuel Santiago. 
Chip forward. Hato's going to try to get on the end of this. Chacon will shield him away as Halterman collects. Tony Halterman really hasn't had a save to make in this game. The only goal on a penalty kick where he just guessed the wrong way. Seymour with space to turn. Seymour left it short of A.R. Smith. Smith indicating he was hoping for that ball to be played over the top. Ball deflecting to the far side. It will be a Charney Yazwo throw. And a Charney Yazwo player has sat down here. Time continues to tick on. No sub is being immediately readied, as far as I can tell by the visitors. There is a player in conversation with Mac Orlowski <coughs> on the far side. Once again, that was Jared Urueta. Not the first time we've seen him down tonight. Throw in by Gamster. Hato trying to turn, but it's a house throw. Chacon just booting it forward, hoping for the run here of Mentosti. Mentosti trying to turn in behind. Flag stays down. Mentosti's shot is wide. Continuing to get into dangerous positions, though. Alejandro Mentosti. House are going to make another change. That is the end of the night for John Alzate. It looks like he's going to be replaced by Isaiah Gallegos Munoz. Number 28, 19-year-old from Plainfield, Illinois, has played some in Spain. The most recent club before this was the U23 team of Alamunecar City in Spain. Bombing forward from defense is Solarski. That's headed away by McLeod. Throw in on the near side for Charney Oswo, who are preparing. Another substitution, 10 minutes plus stoppage time to go. Taken away, first involvement for Gallegos Munoz, but he gives it right away to Gomez. David Shiflarski, Gamster. Far side, this is Mikolajczyk. Gamster under some pressure, gotta be careful. Mentosti is on the chase as this goes back to Dominguez. Easy header for Smith, but he can't find a teammate. Mikulajczyk, just too heavy a touch there. Substitution coming for Charney Yazwo. No, in fact, it's going to wait or not. Didn't see who left the field for Charney Yazwo. 16 has gone off. Not surprising, Jared Rueta, given the couple of bumps he's taken tonight. New man in the game is number eight, Giovanni Villegas. Kramer just stretching out and giving that one away. Here's Gomez. Looking down the near side, trying to run onto this one is Hato. Seymour, or Gomez, excuse me, wanted to push. Gallegos Munoz off to the races up against Solarski. Solarski back to his goalkeeper, who's got to be careful here, Dominguez. Showing composure right back to Solarski. Gallegos Munoz, though, picks his pocket. Coming back on his left, Gallegos Munoz crossing to the middle. A.R. Smith was lurking and it was cleared. And then a foul by McLeod. Free kick, Charney Oswo. And a yellow card is out for Kramer. That's his second. At least it should be. Kramer was shown a yellow card in the first half. Or maybe I was mistaken there. I thought Kramer had been shown a yellow in the first half, but it must have gone to someone else. 
Daniel Hayes picked one up. Uh -oh. oh, there is the red card. No, nope, so I, the ref, the ref didn't realize it, and someone had to remind him. Someone had to remind him that Kramer was already on a yellow card, and Jack Kramer has been sent off. So Kramer is off. House will play seven minutes plus stoppage time with 10 men. At the moment, it looks like Damon Almazan is going to fill in as a right back. And now you've got to think if you're House, you will gladly take the point. That comes with a draw tonight. And Charney Oswald would be disappointed if they can't find a winner. Referee is not ready for play to resume yet. He's... Adding the time on, he says, we'll have to see how much added time we get at the end of this. So a red card in the 82nd minute shown to Jack Kramer. Hato. Viegas. Left it short and charging the other way. This is Elias McLeod. Left it short, though. I think he was looking for Gallegos Munoz. Wide down the near side. This is... Solarski bombing forward, his cross is up and over everyone. A.R. Smith slowing things down. McLeod, put it behind Smith. Viegas, Gomez, still Gomez. Battling there, Almazan can't get it clear. Gomez crossing to the far post, and I think we've got a foul called first. Free kick for House here in the 85th minute. Seymour, House still looking pretty aggressive here in their space down the far side. This is Wynn pushing forward. Wynn to the middle, left it behind his attacking options. End to end stuff right now as hurdling a challenge from McLeod was Gomez. No contact, Gallegos Munoz now. Back and forth we go. Still Gallegos Munoz. Nowhere to go. Through for Mentasti, flags up. He was a good two or three yards offside there when he put his hand up for the ball. In this limited amount of time, can Charney Yaz will make their man advantage count? Down the far side, cross to the middle, headed partially clear, the shot is held by Halterman. Shot came from Hato, driving it low, but right at the housekeeper. Diego Munoz leaving it for A.R. Smith, and Smith will scamper forward. Smith surrounded by defenders, tried to chip it ahead, it was chested down, and cleared by Mike Shaflarski. Gomez tangling with Smith again, Viegas, back to Gomez. Nice work there on the far side by Mika Lodzczyk. The captain, Lukas Szczesniak. Running in Almazan, the makeshift right back. Still Szczesniak. And Damon acquitting himself well and launching that out of play for a throw. Looks like Charney Oswell might make one last late substitution. that change looks like they were going to make it now but instead I think they're content to let time run off the clock and taking his time getting to the other side of the field is Luka Szczesniak he will depart As time continues to tick and tick and tick, and I'm almost surprised the referee has not encouraged Chesniak to leave the field quicker. Here in the 88th minute. Trying to spy the number of the new man on the field. I'm sure we'll see it here in a moment as he gets the ball. 
curved in and easily claimed by Halterman. Looks like number three, but I don't see a three on the roster. So I'm not sure who the mystery man is who's coming to this match. I do have a number three. I just missed it right on the paper in front of me. Dino Miljevic is the new man on the field, playing on the left wing. Eighty-ninth minute now. And House right out the storm of that eighty-second minute red card. Aaron Smith, I don't think, wanted the ball that quickly from Aaron Wynn. So this is just launched down to the near side. Kept in, though, by Gallegos Munoz. Almas on, Gallegos Munoz again. Shipping it down the near sideline, Almas on. Broken up by Solarski. But Almas on wins it back for House. We tick toward the 90th minute. Gallegos Munoz leaving it off here for McLeod. Smith. Run being made by Gallegos Munoz. Gallegos Munoz trying to get their first shoulder to shoulder with Solarski. Still Gallegos Munoz pushing and shoving. Would it be a free kick? Yes, it will. Free kick for House right outside the penalty area. Big opportunity here. House unlikely to get a better one here as we're in the 90th minute. Apologies for any language you might have heard from the crowd. Shannon Seymour all alone over this one. 90th minute, set piece here for Chicago House. Can they steal two points here tonight and win it for the home team? Seymour to take. Lifting it to the middle, header flicked on and away. Seymour again will have a go through the crowd. That's blocked by Santiago, who clears. Into the 90th minute and into stoppage time. Flicked on, Seymour is offside. Four minutes of added time, says the referee. Again, maybe less than you would have expected. Gamster, back here for Mike Schiflarski. Gamster scampering down the far side with those long strides, but his pass too strong for Viegas. Chacon into the feet of Mentosti, who's able to turn. A.R. Smith. Almazan. Almazan ahead, and Gallegos Munoz just wasn't making the run that Almazan expected. One minute gone of the minimum of four. Meanwhile, Jordan Shakiri has scored an 88th minute equalizer for the Chicago Fire. It's 1-1 at Soldier Field. Will this end 1-1? Or will the dying moments feature a winning goal? Header one there by McLeod. Gallegos Munoz, Almazan. Dueling there with Miljevic. Still Damon Almazan, here's A.R. Smith. Smith chipping it forward, hoping for Seymour. Good header won by Santiago. Viegas. Taken away by A.R. Smith. The house captain has just impressive reserves of energy. Largely down to pure effort that he scored the equalizer. Gallegos Munoz now. Still Gallegos Munoz. Not falling for the fakes and standing his ground with Santiago. Miljevic now as we play two of the minimum of four added minutes. Is that a foul by A.R. Smith? It is, and he will be shown a yellow card. 
time continues to tick. Not too many complaints there from the house captain. Launched forward by Alex Gomez. Up and over everyone is chasing it to the corner is Mikolajczyk. Battling there with Wynn. It will be a goal kick. So we approach three minutes played at a minimum of four. And the referee blows full time less than three minutes into stoppage time despite indicating four minutes of a minimum. But sometimes that's just the way it goes. It ends all square here in Midwest Premier League play. Charney Yazwo won. Chicago House won. The opening goal scored by Alex Gomez for the visitors from the penalty spot in the 18th minute. But in the second half, in the 60th minute, it was the captain, A.R. Smith, who equalized for Chicago House to tie up the score. Right back, Jack Kramer was sent off for a second yellow card in the 82nd minute, but it did not prove to be an advantage that Charney Yazwo could take advantage of. So it ends 1-1. believe we'll have a brief post-game interview with a member of Chicago House here in a few minutes, but for now, that is the end of the, of the game action. We'll see you down on the field in a few moments to wrap things up. Hi, my name is Brian Koenig. I am the president of Soccer 2000. We are a soccer specialty store located in Downers Grove. We specialize in servicing club uniforms and a personalized retail experience. Our staff at Soccer 2000 live, eat, and breathe soccer. When you come into Soccer 2000, you're gonna be talking to somebody who knows the sport. So if you have questions about footwear, you're gonna get answers. If you have questions about the replica jerseys, you're gonna get answers because that is our expertise. Soccer 2000 has an exclusive team center that includes a wide variety of uniform kits from the top manufacturers to help your club choose the next kit that will make you guys look great on the field. Soccer 2000 provides exceptional individual and club service. Contact us at 630-241-9500 or find us online at soccer2000.com.
Campbell down on the field with Shannon Seymour, who provided the assist for A.R. Smith's equalizing goal in the second half. Shannon, first on that goal, you had just come off the bench as a substitute. What did you see on that play as you tried to thread that ball through to A.R. that eventually ends up in the back of the net? Yeah, um, honestly, just checking to the ball, something we worked on in practice a lot uh, the last couple weeks was just finding pockets. So just trying to sit in between that, uh, the like defensive backs and the midfield line. And uh, I mean, I heard a shout saying turn and I just checked my shoulder and I see like the space to turn in. So once I turned, I, I saw that both defenders went and uh, just drove to goal. AR makes a great run. And again, I just trust him. Like that's my roommate, that's my teammate, my coworker, everything. So I know exactly where he needs to be. He knows exactly uh, where he's going to make that run and I know where to put it. So I think it just, the chemistry really showed on that. It was a really instant impact when you and Alejandro come off the bench there. You guys temporarily go to that back three, really pushing forward. You get the equalizing goal. What was Coach Poland's message to you two as you were coming into that game? And what did he ask you to do that you guys were able to quickly turn into that equalizer? Yeah, I mean, um, Coach, he, he just said, can we push the tempo a little bit? So, um, again, we always talk about uh, bench energy and coming off and raising the level. Um, so I think, again, just before we came, we talked tactics, going into that three back um, with two up top. And uh, I think we just did that to get a little higher. And uh, I think it worked out for our benefit to get that goal. So lastly, it's a draw tonight, 1-1. One, one. You guys, one win, two draws, one loss in the season. So basically an even 500 record. What do you think is the biggest thing you guys are trying to work on to take that next step so a game like tonight ends 2-1 rather than 1-1? One, one? Um, yeah, I think uh, firstly is minimizing uh, just uh, kind of dumb fouls, I would say. Um, again, I think this is our second game that we've uh, gotten a red card, which again, we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot when that happens. So I think just remaining disciplined and keeping our heads um, is the start. And then um, just, again, putting the ball in the back of the net and trying to just tighten up defensively as much as we can. Uh, again, just to prevent giving up goals first, uh, going down first. I mean, it, it tends to be a good fight to come back, but uh, we really need to work on just scoring that first goal and getting off on the right foot uh, for the rest of the season. Well, I'm sure everyone watching is excited to see you guys get back to work next week. Best of luck. Shannon Seymour, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. And that's going to conclude our coverage of tonight from DePaul College Prep, a 1-1 final score. Thanks for watching Chicago House AC, and we'll see you next time.